Hello, Klaus here and welcome back to yet another video here at the channel. In today's video, we'll have a look at the Siri 55mm anamorphic lens. And uh, I did do a unboxing video about this lens, so if you want to see that, you can go up right here in the top corner and have a look at that. So, uh, in this video, I am going to test out the lens, do some different tests, and as usually, I'm going to talk along the way, uh, telling you what my impression of this lens is. And of course, in the end, I will come with my honest opinion on this lens. Also, a little bit of a disclaimer. This lens was bought for my own money. I did support Siri when they did the Indiegogo campaign. So I bought this for my own money and what I say is my opinion and I'm not paid to say anything else than that. Also, I did ask some questions what people actually wanted me to test out and uh, I'll just take one of the things. Uh, somebody asked me if I could tell what I thought about the rings here. Well, the rings are a new thing for the Siri 35mm. They are not uh, included if you buy the 50mm. Uh, and they are very well built. They are not rubbery. They actually, um, I think it is uh, some sort of 3D printed plastic. That's my thought. I don't know too much about 3D printing though. But uh, And they feel very, uh, very robust, well built. And uh, they fit on the lens and they do what they're supposed to. So thumbs up for Siri for putting these in as well. Uh, also, all of the tests I'll be doing are done on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Um, and so it's not I'm not going to adapt this to another mount. Also, in my unboxing video, I falsely said that you could um, take off the MFT mount and put in whatever mount you bought. That is not true. You have to um, screw that on top of the MFT mount. But yeah, with that out of the way, let's start testing the Siri 35mm anamorphic lens. So first off, here are some nice shots of the lens, and I'll just run you through some specs very quickly. Of course, this is the Siri 35mm 1.8 anamorphic 1.33x lens. The focal lens is of course 35mm, the maximum aperture is f1.8, and the minimum aperture is f16. Also, there are 10 aperture blades inside of this beauty, and the supported frames for this particular lens is micro four thirds. The shooting distance or the focus distance of this lens is 0.85 meters or 85 centimeters. And this is a all manual lens and it is absolutely not a problem at all. Also, you can add filters with the 67 diameters. So things like um, ND filters and matte boxes can easily be put on this lens as well. And the weight of the lens is approximately 700 grams, so it's not too heavy. So if you grab the lens while it was available on Indiegogo, you could get it for $599. If you did not, the retail price right now on B&H is $799 or around $800. And even though $800 seems to be a lot, it is a pretty good price for an anamorphic lens. So with all those specs out of the way, let's start doing some tests. So the first test we are going to do right here is a um, sharpness test. And in, in this particular test, we are going to run through the sharpness of the lens, starting with f1.8. And then I'm cropping in so you can actually kind of see the sharpness as well. And that's how that look. So now we'll go to f2.0. And again, the test is exactly the same. We'll start out with a normal shot and then we'll do a cropped in shot. And then you can actually see how sharpness is and also what is happening in the background. You need to keep a look at that as well. And here we are at f2.8. And I think this looks pretty sharp and pretty usable as well. Here we have the image cropped in. So you can 
have a better look at what is going on here. So at f4, it is definitely being a lot sharper, but you will also see that the uh, shallow depth of field is getting less, which is expected, of course. Here at f5.6, again, it is pretty sharp, I do believe, again, and the depth of field is now very changed. And here we are with f8, and uh, of course the picture is getting a little bit darker, but it's also getting a lot more sharper. And here we have the cropped in, of course, and you can have a look at that as well. And we're going to stop this test with the f16 version of this thing, and that is pretty sharp. It is also pretty grainy because of the way this was shot. So. I most likely wouldn't go to f16 on this lens, at least not without an ND filter, which I did not have here. And here we have a comparison of the f1.8 and the f16, so you can kind of see the difference. Also, a lot of people love to have comparisons of the bra format, which is on the pocket camera, and here I have bra shot in 12 to 1. And also to compare that to the ProRes, and this is the ProRes HQ, again, shot here and a cropped in version of that. And then we have, again, a split screen of both, and uh, you can then have a look at what format you think is the best. Just keep in mind, this is the lowest RAW on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. And of course, I also got a lot of questions about the 35mm lens versus the 50mm lens. And I would love to, to actually talk about that, but I think that deserves a video of its own. So if you're interested in that, leave a comment down below and let me know. So let's go to the next test. For the next test I did, I just wanted to test out how it is to shoot with the lens and the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K handheld and with no gimbals whatsoever. So this is just handheld footage. Uh, I shot at a strange location, or pretty normal location actually. And uh, this is just what you could get out of the lens and the look of that thing. So no flares, nothing like that, but normal footage on a pretty normal day. Okay, so when you have shot your anamorphic footage, you need to squeeze it down in post and in DaVinci Resolve, that is super easy. All you have to do is go into the video, go to aspect ratio, change it from square and change it to 1.3x anamorphic and push OK. And then you have all your anamorphic footage ready to work with. And of course you can't do a lens review without talking about the bouquet of this particular lens. And I think they are pretty nice, they are very rounded. Not necessarily like uh, the anamorphic look, but I actually do fancy those pretty much. And here we have another example of that. And if we just very slowly remove me from the frame, you can actually see that this is just a light stand with some lights on. And here I just throw that out of focus. And that is actually all it is. And again, we can't have a lens review without talking about flares, because this lens flares like crazy. And that is not necessarily a bad thing. And if we compare the flares with the bouquet, we could have a sequence like this.
So that was a look at the anamorphic 35mm lens from Siri. I think it is a fantastic lens. It is well built. The focus ring are very smooth and the aperture ring is a bit harder, so you are not going to accidentally push that. Um, I also think it is the best value for money you can have if you want an anamorphic lens. This is a great way to start shooting anamorphic and it doesn't feel cheap. The lens itself is made out of hard metal in some sort of way. It has a little bit of weight to it, but that is not a bad thing. That is actually a pretty good thing. And I think if you want to shoot anamorphic, I think it is actually better to start with the uh, 35mm than, for instance, the 50 because you are going to have a little bit of a wider field of view. Anyway, I do hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit that subscribe button, give the video a like, share it with your friends if you want to help them out. And if you want to get notified every time there is a new video on this channel, please hit that bell icon down in the corner. Until next time, keep filming, keep learning and keep sharing.